Yea, Lord, I have believed that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <coughs> One week ago we kept the feast of St. Mary Magdalene, and today is the feast day of her sister, Martha. Traditionally, the Church looks upon St. Mary Magdalene as the type of the, not only the penitent life, but the type of the contemplative life, someone who is concerned only for our Lord. And thus, our Lord defends uh, Mary from her sister Martha. The two sisters were sort of getting at each other on the kind of intense occasion of the reception of our Lord and the apostles for a dinner at the home of their brother Lazarus. Martha, our Lord says, Mary has chosen the better part. Thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the better part. She just sits at our Lord's feet and absorbs everything that she said, that he says. Listen, she's a contemplative soul. Yet at the same time, our Lord and his apostles, because our Lord is a true man, would have been unable to continue his work, his preaching, his teaching, his speaking, unless somebody had provided the food for him. And that somebody on this occasion was St. Martha. Our Lord didn't criticize her for what she was doing, but criticized her for maybe that little bit of a critical spirit towards her sister and uh, the fact that she was all upset about doing something that was good. The, the two souls, though, are meant to get along and not to criticize or, or peck at each other. The contemplative and the active souls, both are necessary in the church. You see it in their religious orders. You see it in the Benedictines and after them in the mendicant orders. St. Uh, uh, Anthony of Padua, whom we honor today, is a good example of that. That is to say that he was a saint who was both active preaching to thousands and working miracles and traveling all over to suppress heresy, being the first to teach theology to his Franciscan brethren, and he was also a contemplative soul. He was very happy in those early years of his life when he was a student, poring over the sacred scriptures, and as a young priest in his Augustinian monastery in Portugal, or as a new Franciscan when he was assigned just a kitchen duty in a small little friary. We had lots of time to pray. And even as a busy friar, he took time to go to his little uh, hermitage, his tree house that he had in the walnut tree. He loved to go there and to pray to be with our Lord. The truth of the matter is that for most of us, we have a vocation that is that a, a bit like St. Anthony. We must combine the St. Mary and the St. Martha in our own soul. And if we have too much on the one side or too little on the other, why then there won't be a proper balance in our lives. That is to say, when we're busy about many things, if we don't take time to pray, our spiritual lives will die. We won't be nourishing or feeding our Lord in our own soul. But on the other hand, man uh, cannot live without bread, but we do have to take care of those daily needs one way and another. But the idea is to do it always with the spirit of prayer. Now, in the statue of St. Martha, you will see that she has a dragon at her left-hand side, and she has a holy water sprinkler in her right hand. That is because <clears throat> when St. Martha was, with many Christians, put into a boat without a rudder or an oar or a sail, by the Jews after Pentecost and miraculously taken to the south of France, to Provence, <coughs> she, with her brother's permission, who was the first bishop of Marseille, the great port town, she began to preach the gospel, even as St. Anthony would in a similar area centuries later, and she would exercise or drive out demons. <coughs> in particular, there was a great dragon who was disturbing the people in the town of what is today Tarascon in southern France. And there, by means of her prayers, the sign of the cross and the sprinkling of holy water, this great beast who was a devil, uh, she was able to tie up with her cincture and drag to the town, and the townspeople uh, destroyed it. And so she's depicted as with a little demon at her side or a dragon because of her power over extra, uh, as an exorcist over demons, and then a reminder, too, of the important use of holy water as a sacramental in driving out devils. So you will generally see St. Martha, not so much with um, kitchenware, although she is a patroness of hostesses and cooks, 
which you'll see here with um, the spiritual kitchenware, as it were, that is to say, with the holy water bucket and the sprinkler. Because no matter where we are or what we are doing, we must fortify ourselves with these sacramentals. Last of all, St. Martha comes to us at each funeral in a very beautiful way, and our Lord asks Martha in the funeral gospel, the same gospel that is read for the Feast of the Blessed Sacrament, Corpus Christi, our Lord asks her if she believes that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God, who will give eternal life to all those who believe in him. And she makes that beautiful profession of faith on which everything, whether it be practical or supernatural and spiritual, depends. Yea, Lord, I have believed that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. When we make such an act of faith with St. Martha, why then all of our prayers and all of our works will surely be blessed by our Lord. After Mass, we have the devotion of St. Anthony. Let us kneel for a moment now before Mass and say a prayer to today's saints. From the midst of thy peaceful rest, protect those who are now carrying on the interests of Christ on earth in his mystical body, which is the entire church, and in his wearied and suffering members, the poor and the afflicted. St. Martha, bless and multiply the works of holy hospitality. May the vast field of mercy and charity yield ever-increasing harvest. May the zeal displayed by so many generous souls lose nothing of its praiseworthy activity. And for this end, O Sister of Magdalen, teach us all, as our Lord taught thee, to place the one thing necessary above all else, and to value, at its true worth, the better part. Pray for us, St. Martha, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. O Lord our God, who has called all those who bear the name of thy Son to serve one another, both in flesh and spirit, by the works of faith and charity, by the intercession of St. Martha, renew our zeal for the task thou hast given us, that we may serve the coming of thy kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. May the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.